This week on the podcast, we talk about the movie that brought Ridley Scott back to the franchise, 2012's Prometheus. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dissect That Film Podcast, where we dissect your favorite films and film franchises. Today, we are back to explore the final two films in the Alien franchise. This week, it is 2012's Prometheus, directed by the man who started it all, Ridley Scott. A king has his reign. I'm your host, Brett Parker. Joining me as always, the wonderful Dan and Angela of DNA Gaming. Hello. Hello. You good? Yes. Next time I'll do the whole thing. Just Dan, Dan was dead. Like, I had to keep going, though. I had to push through Dan's potential death. The show <laughs> must go on. It has to go on. go on. It has to go on. I had a brain fart there, so it's it's good that editing is a thing. Um, yes. <laughs> so today, we're back to talk about the final two movies of this franchise. We have gone through... Uh, the the original four of the quadrilogy, we have then ventured into the two films that put the two juggernauts of the sci-fi genre together with Alien vs. Predator. And now we're back to, I guess we're now going back in time even farther than before as we talk about a movie that originally wasn't supposed to be an alien movie, but then turned into an alien movie. But ultimately, it was the film that brought Ridley Scott back to the franchise. Well, technically, it's not an alien movie. Yeah. If you watch behind the scenes, though, the whole time it was planned as an alien movie. <laughs> I understand, in a way, but like... In a way. But, but like, but... Yeah, go ahead. We'll talk about it. No, I mean, you can keep keep going. I just... It, it's funny I mean, because the behind the scenes of it, like, when they're going through it, all of the scripts and all of the rewrites, like, it was just called... It was, like, Alien whatever. It, like, had, like, a code name, but it was... Alien was always the title. And so they were like, let's uh, let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the, the thing that no one ever questioned, which was the guy sitting in the weird chair in the original alien, the space jockey. That's literally what Ridley Scott said. He literally was like, I want to make a movie about the guy in that chair. That's fair. And, I, I and that to problem. be honest, I think it split the alien uh, fandom in half. You had a lot of hardcore alien fans who were like we don't care we know because of course it's been you know when this movie came out it was 33 years between the original alien and prometheus so there was a lot of books and lore that had come out about this franchise before ridley scott decided to just go well i started this so i don't care about all that other stuff this is what i feel we should talk about and so you have the the people who are just like waving their fists up in the air and anger because it didn't need to happen. And then you have people who appreciate it, which I'm kind of halfway between. I'm like, okay, I guess it wasn't that necessary, but you know what? I am intrigued. I don't know about you guys. That's just how I feel. Well, we, we have opinions. Well, let's talk about those opinions. Order. What'd you guys think of this movie? I, I like to stare at you the oh, whole time. Don't stare at me, please. Um, I mean, it's got my man in it. Andrus Elba. I could oh, listen to him all I was day. Say Michael Fassbender? No. I could listen to him all day. I like him too. Yeah, I do. Magneto. I am the master of magnet. <laughs> and Benedict Wong. I was like, yes. wait a minute. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. right? Here. Fuck yeah. A little bit. Uh, it's a little bit leaner. Yeah. A little bit leaner. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But I enjoyed what little he said. I mean, he didn't say much. No. But I enjoyed him. Um, I mean, I I enjoyed it. That's it. So I got. We discussed this earlier. I was like, 
what went on in this movie because we'd watched it right before we had to watch um the other one something about knowing what people did at a certain and time I, was like, I was like yes, I was last like, wait week's a minute episode. <laughs> yes, I'm like, yeah, I'm like yeah, you, yeah. you you you, you got to remind me we've watched so many movies and I'm like I'm trying my brain is trying to keep up with what is what and I was like oh, yeah but yeah I liked it like don't I don't know it was definitely better than some of the other ones that we've watched in this franchise or just a, as in this, a whole in this oh, um both okay <laughs> I was gonna I mean <laughs> of all the films we've watched on this show <laughs> absolutely <laughs> the the last few weeks yes um. Yeah, I really I really enjoyed this movie like a lot. Like I've seen it twice. Um, I, I love I love the characters of it. I, I know it takes place at like an earlier point in the timeline, obviously after the alien, well, the alien versus predator stuff, if we even count that. But earlier in the timeline and any of the other just main alien films. And I, I love the feel of it. I love I like the characters. I like the characters were enjoyable. They felt they felt more like the characters from the earlier alien franchise. Mm -hmm. Like they weren't like these bombastic, ridiculous characters. It just felt like characters. Like, I don't mean this to be like a generic thing. They just felt like people in and doing their jobs. I don't know, not as actors, but they were portraying people doing their jobs. That makes sense. They feel realistic, I guess, to some extent. And most, most of it, not all of it. There's some scenes. I'm just like, why'd you do that? But anyway, yeah. there's like two, and yeah. two in particular. I like the fact that they're expand they expanded the universe. Like I, I don't I'm not an extended lore guy. Like I don't know anything about it. So like I, that happens a lot in franchises because they'll be they'll license shit out. Like oh do this do this. It happened in Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a very common thing. Of course Star Wars probably being the poster child for that with the whole Disney thing. But I I, I liked you know there were. It obviously, it was a little more CG, but I didn't feel it was overbearing. Uh, there was some really good practicals, uh, some some good kills. Uh, I, I really, like I said, I really liked the atmosphere. Uh, I, I don't know. I just really enjoyed this. My biggest issue with this whole thing is where I'm going to place this compared to the other films. That is my biggest issue. Yeah, because um, we've kind of gone I, in order, right? We've yeah. Or, or, for me, no, we, we, we're over. not in order because you guys voted for Requiem over. The first AVP, so we, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we pooched it. But I will say, there's though, a movie there, guys. There Somewhere. is. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. Well, you can see this movie. So oh yeah, that's absolutely. A plus. It's gorgeous. <laughs> this movie is gorgeous. Dude, see that? That's, not... that's why Parker couldn't see it. He had his eyes closed. <laughs> guys, well, that's, that's it. Guys. That's that's <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> Is he, well, I can imagine him just like, all right, let's watch this movie. Turns the lights off, puts his sunglasses on. This, this is what on, happened, like... right? I, we were like, oh, yeah, we're doing AVP Requiem this week. And I just went, oh, God. And I never took my hand off my eyes. <laughs> That's what it was. No, but you talked about the movie being, it just, it, it doesn't even look like a 2012 movie. No. I think it aged well because some of the movies will date themselves, you know, they date themselves fast. <laughs> their movies. It just, it looks great. Like, it's got really good cinematography and shit. I just, it's why it felt more. Like the first two Alien movies, where it felt dark, it felt claustrophobic. Even like even third one too, because the third one felt yeah. that way too. But it, it's had that feel to it that other movies in the franchise did not. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I like the I like how all this works. I like the origin, and it makes sense to me. And we'll discuss things that were altered and how I feel they make more sense. Yeah. But again, I'm not an expanded lore guy. But yes, I really really enjoyed this movie. I I mean, I saw this is the only movie in the franchise I ever saw in theaters. I remember seeing the trailer for this on TV and I was like, I'm in. I was a huge Ridley Scott fan at the time. I still am. I like his older stuff. I think this was his like for me, his like final really good movie before he just was making the things he was making. Um, <laughs> but I yeah, I watched it last night. I still enjoy this movie a lot. It does have its issues and I understand the why people have issues with this movie. And especially if you are a hardcore alien fan, uh, you know, the, the things if the, here's the thing though. If, if there was anyone to change the lore or to change things based on the original, who better to do it than the man who directed the original, who helped create the original. 
So I, I, I don't know if that's a super valid fact for people to like be like, bro, oh, why did they change that? Why did they change that? It's like, well, I mean, he did help create it, you know, along with Dan O'Bannon. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's just the, it's just the way it works, just the way fandom works. But if you if you think about it from just the films, just the films, not anything, books, video games, none of that. He doesn't really change anything. No. There's nothing that's in the movies that when that comes up, it's like, well, AVP aside, because yeah. if you wouldn't even count those, but just the core alien films, there's nothing that happens in those that can't, like, affects anything before, really, that I can think of. No. Like, this doesn't... The events of Prometheus doesn't factor into what happens in Alien. It doesn't. Yeah. It's completely different and planets. Nothing at all. It's, like, it just... that. It does it now. I can't speak to Covenant because I know things drastically change from Prometheus to Covenant to then go, what the hell happened here? <laughs> Which we'll talk about that next week. But um, the thing about it was that when Ridley Scott he 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 went to Fox with the idea of making uh kind of a prequel to Alien, but not a prequel to Alien to kind of make it its own thing to follow a different path instead of it converging into the alien franchise. It wanted to just be like, it's in that universe, but it doesn't, you'll never, it'll never link up to it. It's never going to be like, you're like, this movie is then going to go into alien. It was kind of just its yeah. own path because the universe yeah. is huge. And these, and the species clearly is probably on different planets. And they talk about how it's, it's, it's like an infestation. Like they're not, they don't have, like they never speak of like a home planet for the xenomorphs. It's more of just like they're an infestation. They're well, they take over planets like insects or rodents or whatever. That's what they they talk. He, they mentioned earlier. It's a weapon. It's a yeah. biological yeah, weapon. Exactly. That's, it explains the xenomorph so well. Like I understand like in the early movies, they're just a scary monster with acid blood that reproduces off everything and blah, blah, blah. But it makes sense. From a biological weapon standpoint, because again, we're dealing with alien technology, so that really throws shit out the window. No animal would exist to really do that in theory. Animals are specialized, from our knowledge, to be evolve a certain path and be specialized in certain ways. A, web, a thing like the xenomorph, being able to exist in space, being able to have acid blood, being able to literally spawn off just about anything biological, mm -hmm. because of the way it's designed, is too specialized to be natural. It has to be developed or engineered. Right. That's why it makes sense to me is like like oh, it makes sense now as a biological weapon why they are the way they are. Yeah. Which again, backpedaling, there's no xenomorphs in this movie. No. None at all. Not a one. I mean, so, you you spoiler. see of I mean, you see something that resembles one and might be like an early version of one or just maybe a subspecies of the I mean, I don't know exactly, but we get to see something. We get to see like early yeah. views of what we would then, you know, what we become would become the face hugger or the, the xenomorph and all that. Um, I just think the big uh, uh, the biggest problem that I've seen from people who've talked about this movie is the fact of changing the space jockey. Like the, the space jockey's never explained in the original. No, he's just there. Yeah, he's great. just there. They see him. They see the that something has come out of its chest. What may that be? And then they find the eggs down below, and then the events of Alien happen. And literally, Ridley Scott just was like, "Hey, let's let's explore that more." What you know, no one ever asked the question, "Who is the space jockey?" And he does not like. He also stated he doesn't like the term space jockey. He's like, I don't know whoever came up with that term, but I don't know what that means. Uh, and so, yeah, they pretty much came up with the idea of the engineers who pretty much were the basis behind the human, you know, human creation and then ultimately mm -hmm. trying to destroy humanity. Um, so I don't know. I just I thoroughly enjoy this movie. I remember seeing it in theaters and I, I think I was a little confused coming out of the theater because it was one of those things where you went into it going. I remember them marketing it like this is not an alien movie. This is not an alien movie. And it's like, OK. And then you get to the final part where they show the creature emerging and you're like. That must have been added late. That had to have been like something added to kind of just give you that connection. And I was like, OK, I mean, sure, it's not terrible. It's not like the worst thing, but like you're like, 
ah, you're like Leonardo DiCaprio sitting in the chair going, <laughs> whistling, pointing at the thing. <laughs> yeah. I know what that is. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this movie is gorgeous. As we stated before, yes. the cinematography is is unbelievable in this movie, especially for 2012. I mean, this was the same year that The Avengers came out, and this movie looked way better than The Avengers. Not, yes. not that The Avengers is a bad movie, but like visually, yes. I think this movie is gorgeous. Uh, we can credit that to uh, D- uh, Darius Wolski, who is also the cinematographer for The Crow, Dark City. He's also done movies with uh, Gore Verbinski. He was the director of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. He actually was the cinematographer for the Car- Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Uh, Sweeney Todd uh, and Alice in Wonderland for Tim Burton, which people, I guess, could, you know, that's a that's one that's up in the air for people. He's also done some other movies with Ridley Scott. He actually did the cinematography for Covenant, which we'll talk about next week. And the latest one was House of Gucci, which came out last year. Oh. And he's actually the cinematographer for the Napoleon movie that's coming out next year or this year, uh, which is uh, Joaquin Phoenix is playing Napoleon Bonaparte. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, David Geiler and Walter Hill came back to produce this. They've been the producers for this franchise pretty much since I think Alien 3. We've talked about this. I keep forgetting every time we talk about that, but I believe they, they came on for Alien 3 and have been the producers ever since. Uh, it was written by John Spates and uh, Damon Lindelof. Uh, Damon Lindelof actually was is more well known for writing shows. He did the Watchmen show from 2019, which is really good. He he wrote though some pretty some hits and some misses. Uh, he was the writer for Cowboys and Aliens with Harrison Ford and Daniel Craig. Do you ever do you remember that movie? I. I remember it in theaters, but I've never seen it. I, I, didn't watch it, I saw I it know. once and it's like, okay, did not expect this. <laughs> I didn't expect Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford was on an <laughs> alien kick back then. He was like, Indiana Jones, uh, aliens. Now I get to fight I more guess. aliens. <laughs> Fucking best, uh, Jesus, Star, Star Trek Into Darkness, which I think when people talk about the newer Star Trek movies is probably like the least favorite of them all. I enjoy it, but it's more because of Benedict Cumberbatch being con that people didn't like mm-hmm. uh, world war Z, which is hit and miss for people. And so yeah. And Tomorrowland, which was a absolute bomb uh, for yep. Disney, uh, which was the George Clooney movie. So yeah, he's, um, he's more well known for, for, for good TV shows, but he was brought on pretty much because the original guy that they had brought on didn't have really enough credit or enough kind of, yeah, experience behind him. So they wanted to bring an experienced writer on, and he was kind of the one to come up with the idea of why don't we not, why don't we make sure that the path for this movie doesn't ever coincide with the uh, the original four films of the Alien franchise? It can it can be part of that universe, but never it'll never like you'll never see Ripley in this in this line. Um, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, after Covenant, the franchise kind of died, and then and now you know there's been things up in the air but we'll talk more about that next week when we talk about covenant again after 33 years ridley scott comes back to direct and uh, i think that's another reason why i was excited to see this movie you know ridley scott's name usually on a film brought a lot of excitement made me want to go see i mean he's directed some of my favorite movies of all time so and of course he directed the original alien so who wouldn't be excited to go see what he could do with this uh franchise also has a great cast uh, yeah, Numi Rapance, who at the time really hadn't done a huge amount in the I know in the American markets. I know she uh, she did the original um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. She did that whole series. Uh, she's from Sweden, so she's done. She was mm. huge in the Swedish market, and then she was. This was kind of her big, uh, big, big movie. Actually, no, she did Sherlock Holmes: Game of Shadows the year before. So I'm wrong. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean she. She leads this movie alongside Michael Fassbender, of course, who was um, a year out from X-Men First Class, I think came out the year before this. Yeah. uh, As Magneto. And to be honest, he plays a really good, just absolute creep. Like, this dude is just... Yeah, he does, doesn't he? He plays an android perfectly. Yeah, yes. It's eerily creepy. I was going to give a little more uh, credit to Numi for her physical acting oh, is yes. really good in this Very movie. Good. She, Holy shit. She really 
carries this. She really carries this movie in a way and in the way that she is. It's not just about her dialogue and like the, the way that she's talk like she carries Logan Marshall green who plays uh, the other, her boyfriend there. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That guy, that guy. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Holloway. 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 Yeah. She carries him. And, and don't get me wrong. I think that Logan Marshall green is a good actor, but every time I see him, I'm like, is that Tom Hardy? (laughs) No, it's not Tom Hardy. Yeah, yeah. What is that guy in? What the fuck does he do? Like, he was in Logan a movie Ro- recently called <laughs> Upgrade. Oh, yeah. He was in oh, Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming for about a, half a second. He played Shocker. He was in a movie uh, I just saw this past year called The Invitation that came out a while no, ago. No, let's go. Stop scrolling so fast. I can't read. Yeah, he gets, uh, he, gets, he gets mixed up with Tom Hardy quite a bit. He, he looks like they could be related. Um... Idris Elba, of course, with his no, really, really shoddy southern accent, I was like, it's not great. It's not great, but it's not the worst thing that this movie has. And the worst thing this movie has is Guy Pierce, who is a great actor in the worst old man makeup. It looks like bad grandpa <laughs> style, like old man makeup, where I was like, is that what is happening here? <laughs> it just it looks, looks like he's awful. Yeah. He's supposed to be like 140 million years old in this movie, I swear. It's just so it's so goofy. It like it legit just looks like a dude wearing makeup. It doesn't look real at all. <laughs> this guy Pierce is in this movie, guys. Yes. And then Charlize Theron, yes. who I love. Her character is just generic, like bad guy, to be honest. She's like, she plays somewhat the villain in this movie to a degree, I guess. I guess the really the villain is just stupidity um amongst everyone on the ship well actually david is the villain of this movie but um yes it's 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 that triangle of wayland david and vickers you know trying to just do stupid shit that dude (laughs) charlie's their own does an amazing job at playing somebody that has a pole shoved so far up their ass I swear, she's just an amazing job at it. <laughs> Fucking stellar. Yeah, she's um, she's very good at just being just unbearable. Like you just you just go into a room and you, she just starts talking. You're like, I'm out. I'm gonna go drink. <laughs> right, right. So the music was composed by Mark Strattenfeld, whose score is just fantastic. The way that this movie opens, yes. it's gorgeous, and the that mm-hmm. theme that plays throughout, I love it. I feel like I've heard it from another movie, though. Was it similar to like the original Alien theme? Like, I felt like every time I'd hear the theme, I was like, that sounds eerily familiar. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But he's also the he's done music for Ridley Scott a couple times with American Gangster, uh, Body of Lies. And he also did Robin Hood in 2010 with uh, Russell Crowe. Oh, yeah. That one that nobody remembers. Got it. Yeah, that's 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 a. Ridley Scott movie, yeah, no one ever talks about because it's just not memorable. It's literally like, remember Gladiator? It's a very just, it's Gladiator again, but not nearly as good. Dude, yeah, Gladiator. Russell Crowe plays Robin Hood. Okay. Dude, listen. Kate Blanchett's in that movie, though, and she's great. Uh, what What's the Robin Hood I remember for the early 90s? Oh, Prince Robin Hood. Thieves. Uh, Prince of Thieves. Oh, yeah. I was going to say Men in Tights. But what was, who was in that? Who was the main guy? Kevin Costner. Names? That's it. Yeah. Because Carrie Elways was uh, uh, Men in Tights, the Mel Brooks version. Yep, yeah. yeah, fuck oh, yeah, it was Men in Tights. So, yeah, good. so good. Yeah. Chew, is that you? <laughs> and um, yeah, this was again produced by. Well, this was produced by Scott Free Productions, which is Ridley Scott's production company, alongside Brady Wine, which owns the rights to the Alien franchise. That's why they were pretty much involved. Oh yeah, as they should be. Yep. Uh, this movie was released in Paris. On April eleventh, two thousand and twelve, in the, the UK on Ju- <laughs> the UK That's on June first, two thousand and twelve, and in the United States on June eighth, two thousand and twelve, my wife's birthday. Uh, oh, and this, hey! this movie runs two hours and four minutes, which fucking for a movie like this, I was I was good, especially a movie that really good engrosses length. you. I loved it. Yes. Uh, the budget was between 120 and 130 million dollars, and it grossed 403.4 million dollars. So, I think it did a pretty good job. Uh, I think people mm-hmm. people were pretty excited with the fact that the Alien franchise was coming back, even though it was kind of wasn't really pushed out 
as we stated before, as an alien movie. But you know what? I was there. I bought a movie ticket and I enjoyed myself, even though I left the theater going, huh? What? I need to see that I, again. I and then I ended up buying this four disc collector collector's edition Blu-ray, which has seven hours of bonus material, which I did not even attempt to even crack most of that. I think I watched about an hour of it and I was like, it's a lot. Yeah, we, we have. I don't remember which version I have, because I think I may have that same one you have. Well, yeah, I have. I actually have two versions of this movie because I have it part of that collection that I bought that uh, has that because I, I needed it for Covenant. I was laughing at Scott Free because that's where we were talking about talking to Ridley about his name, telling yeah. him he was named after he was kind of named after Ridley Scott. And Scott Free comes up and he's like, there's no Scots here. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Okay. Then I told I leaned over to Ridley. He's like, don't listen to your mother. Tell everybody you were named after a space dragon. That's all it is. Which is true. Just you are right, though, indirectly. I mean, you did name him after that, right? Well, he he was named. He was named after. uh, My intent was to name him after the villain for Metroid Ridley. That was the name, which which is named after Ridley Scott. Yes, yes. Yeah. As we as we've stated before, the Metroid series and the Alien franchise they very much coincide with each other because uh, Metroid was very much influenced by Alien. Yes, that is correct. That is very correct. So, uh, couple, and straps. A couple Let's more ca- casts that we should talk about is Sean Harris, who played Feifeld. He always plays a very what scary is, guy. He was in a couple of is, Mission Impossible movies what, recently. He was in a movie on Netflix little, recently called The Stranger. That's, uh, I mean, I don't really know much. And uh, Rafe Spall is back. We're talking about Rafe Spall again. Yes. He, yeah. Jurassic what does Park. He do? Um, uh, 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 the, the fucking Jurassic World's Fallen Kingdom. He was the villain. He was the in bad the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, I why does his asshole look Tom familiar? Um, we talked about Benedict Wong being in this movie, and I remember seeing it. I, I mean, back when I originally saw it, I, you know, he wasn't in the MCU yet, so it wasn't like he wasn't like, oh my god, it's Benedict Wong. It was literally the my viewing yesterday. I was like, that's fucking Benedict Wong. <laughs> that's what, that's hey. what we watched our first time because this was like what two years ago we watched it for the first time. Yeah, well, no, hey, it was yes. last year you guys watched it, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, you guys watched it on uh, stream. Like, it's or the guy. Like that? Yeah, yeah. It's the well, guy. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to go. There's not a, it's too much. I feel like I could talk about this movie for hours because there's so much behind the scenes stuff. With you know, HR uh, Geiger came back to kind of be a consultant on uh, the the way this movie looks because they used a lot of his designs for this movie. Uh, of course, as we've talked about, he was a huge influence in the Alien franchise. The way the Xenomorphs look, and a lot of the, a lot of how m- most of the things look in this franchise is is thanks to H.R. Geiger. So he came in and pretty much was like Ridley Scott was like, I want to make sure he likes what we're doing here because I feel like if he doesn't like the designs or like what how things are looking, then I got to start over and I got to re you know re redraw. Also. Ridley Scott drew a lot of the shit for like the storyboards. Like he's an artist. Like he literally would. Is he? he was very involved. You could see in the, uh, with a lot of the behind the scenes is that he was very involved in this movie. Of course, he's the director, so you got to be somewhat involved. But he just he wanted to be part of everything. He really wanted to be included in every single piece uh, of this. I feel like it was a huge passion project for him to be able to come back and be a part of this franchise again. And you know what? I think that's why I appreciate this movie a little bit more, because like I said, I do like Ridley Scott. I've been a huge fan of his for years. His movies recently haven't been things I've gone out to like rushed out to go see anymore because they're just not my thing. But the man's a legendary filmmaker. I don't care. And to be honest, I think this one is part of I think this is a, a good movie in his filmography that I I recommend, even though I feel most people that uh, answered our tweet uh, won't agree with yeah. probably not before we start I do have to open a beer before this thing gets warm on me uh, I am drinking it's called Synergy it's an IPA uh, from uh, the local 315 brewing company out of Warner's New York which is right outside Syracuse New York nice yeah so thank you Josh I know the brewmaster there so I'm gonna shout him out so let's open this baby oh yeah <laughs> You're not drinking alcohol. Just burnt. I'm not tonight. I drank one yesterday. Angela, what are you to... drinking? I am drinking a red, white, and berry Smirnoff Ice Smash. Ooh, those are Blue good. raspberry, cherry, and citrus. Those are that, good. That was those very are dangerous. Good. 
They're okay. very good. Yeah, those can be dangerous. Um, all right. Do we have anything yeah, else we want to talk about? Taste the alcohol in it. Yeah. That's, uh, no, that's I'm dangerous. just doing. I'm I'm here. I'm just doing some mild research on the movie. Just, all right. Yeah. I will talk. Keep going. All right. Well, this movie opens up to space because <laughs> I mean, all don't all these movies open up on space? Beautiful. They have to. Yeah, and then we go down to a planet. And it's beautiful landscapes, beautiful score. You're just traveling through, looking at everything. It's just gorgeous cinematography here. And you get a spaceship that looms overhead as a, as a man wanders out to the edge of a waterfall. And then they zoom in on him. And you're like, that don't look like no man I've seen before. Nope. There's actually a blue man group. <laughs> <laughs> it's very similar very similar i uh, the there was a deleted scene that actually showed more of them kind of there was like a whole group of them that like bring this guy out to this spot but i like the fact that it's just him but it shows the ship yeah. overhead and as he's like he's wearing a cloak he like strips down you see the ship kind of take off and you see that yeah. he is i don't really know what he's doing he's kind of like sacrificing himself i guess because he drinks he, takes the, he drinks the he black drinks goo the- he drinks the black goo. He's Which like tears him up, tears him apart from the inside out, pretty much. Yeah, and you see, it's everything. a, um, it's oh, dude. I'm, I'm this is a missed opportunity that we didn't get engineer Wong, Wang, like Wing Wong. It's just in like pan. I was across. gonna say we like, got Benedict Wong. That's we true. did. We just needed another one, but I need to be blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, he might have, oh, all the time. They're blue balls all the time. Maybe that's why they're so angry. <laughs> so angry. Yeah, he gets. Oh, John, your nuts are particularly blue today. <laughs> but yeah, he gets broken yeah, down from the inside out from this goo. Uh, you get to literally see like his his DNA like break down all the cells in inside of his body. You see like his like the the veins in his arms like collapse down, and you get to see like the goo running yeah. through it. It's a really cool shot. And then he like the worst is when he like he falls on his hands and knees and then his arm like snaps yeah. and that's what caused him to fall into the over the waterfall. And then, yeah, he continues yep. to break down. But then it shows after he breaks down completely that the DNA starts to reform. So it's like what death brings something is reborn from it. Yes. And then we get the title card. Prometheus. <laughs> oh, and it was a huge deal for Ridley Scott and Damon Lindelof to make sure that this movie was not titled Alien something. They would just go, we'll do that in the next one. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but this is the first time a movie has been. So uh, the movie has two meanings. So this. So, of course, the Prometheus is the name of the ship uh, that we are part of throughout this movie. But also it's named after the Greek of uh, the Greek. It was he wasn't a god, was he Prometheus? He was punished he by was, the gods for stealing fire. Well, for wasn't humanity. he a titan? Was he a titan? Yes, he was. Oh, hey, look, a line on Wikipedia that tells me who Prometheus is. Um, so the central theme of Prometheus concerns the eponymous titan of Greek mythology who defies the gods and gifts humanity with fire for which he is su- uh, subjected to eternal punishment, which is literally in the myth. He is his like liver and all of his like innards are pecked away by a bird, by a giant eagle or something like that. And then they grow Until back. The end of time. Yeah, and then yep. they grow back, and it comes back. Yeah, he's in the he's in God of War, the first God of War game. I think. Yeah, uh, he's in he's in the second one. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're pretty... I remember the first one very vividly. It's either the second or third. Um, I will say this is important for those of that that follow this mindset. But the beginning of the the with the engineer falling this is not what I was read. I just wanted to talk about this. The engineer falling into the water after taking the black goo, and it's a it's a um. The black goo is a uh, it's designed to destroy all biological life on the planet. That's mm-hmm. that's its purpose. But we'll get into what it does later. But when he falls into the water, and rewrites. So this is supposed to be like you said, this is supposed to be the origin of us. Yep. So the, there's a train of thought that. That er, some people believe that on Earth, life didn't just happen. Like it had something had to start this process. And there are some people who believe that it was that that whatever biological bit was needed on the planet was brought from some outside source be it rocks you know asteroid collision some shit like that Mm -hmm. so that is going along with that train of thought so so we then meet dr shaw 
and her crew. Uh, this is they're archaeologists, pretty much. They're yep. trying to find um, pretty much evidence of these beings, of the engineers. And so they find a cave drawing of a man pointing up and there's like like three or four orbs that are coming off of his hand or something like that. Like he's pointing and he's like, oh, that's the same one we saw in a different country. It's got to be, you know, and then she goes, ah, they're inviting us to go find them. And I'm like, I don't think that's what they're doing at all. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, it's like, oh, this is going to end well. (laughs) It's their business card. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, we are now on the Prometheus, and it's kind of like how most alien movies open, where you're on the ship, everyone's in hypersleep, and, but the difference is, is that you see the android first, you're not, it's not like you're later, you are later told that, this is the android. Nope. You David is an android. You know right away. Just the way. I mean, of course, this takes place in 2093. So this takes place about 40 or 50 years before Alien. So this is, of course, an earlier model than Ash. So it's mm-hmm. you can tell just by the mannerisms and things like that that he is an android. But the difference is, is that Wayland... From Way- uh, from Wayland Utani, which in this movie it's just Wayland, uh, created David himself. So he is more advanced than probably most other androids that were put on other ships. But yeah, he's doing things on his own. He's learning uh, new languages. He's learning how to do certain things. He, of course, they had watching to, movies. Yeah, riding a bike and shooting basketball. I'm like, that's an alien resurrection. Call out. Yes. Hundred percent that's kind of what that's for. Yeah, he's shooting a basketball. I mean, come on. And something's going on. The ship rocks, and he's like, oh, what's going what's happening here? And then uh he finds Vickers, Charlize Theron. She is doing some really at first it looks like she's doing really good push-ups, and then they show the wide shot. I'm like, those aren't very good push-ups there, Charlize. You gotta get down more. Yeah, go but go, I can't go, say go. that because I'm fat now and I can't do a push-up anymore. I'm just I'm just not strong enough anymore. I'm so yeah. so out of shape. Um, Children ruined us. <laughs> no, it's just my lazy ass ruined myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> so she pretty much tells him, hey, you got to wake, wake them all up. So we get our typical, everybody wakes up from the hypersleep. Everyone meets in like the mess hall, having food. This food looks way better than what they got on uh, the Nostromo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because this is this is Utani funded. This is dude. yes, yeah, yeah. This is a straight up and Vicar. I like how Vickers has her own wing. It's like it's not even attached yep. to the ship. It's its own pod. Yeah. I was like, you bitch, you suck. Yep. And uh, also, David dyes his hair. I don't know what the purpose of that was. Maybe he just felt like it. Yeah. Well, he was watching maybe to movie. learn. I guess maybe to learn. Oh yeah, he was watching. Um... Oh no can't think of it it's an older like movie from like the 50s i don't know i couldn't think of it either so they find you find out it's been two years since the events of them finding that cave drawing to them to where they are now they've been on the prometheus for two years and we then get to meet the crew we get to meet idris alba who is the captain i just called him the captain even though i knew uh, his name was stated a lot in this movie as uh, janik yeah. Or Yannick. It's Yannick because the J is. Yannick. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just kept calling him the captain. Uh, we meet Milburn, who is played by Rafe Spall. He's the biologist. We meet Sean Harris, who is Feifeld, who is the geologist, which I love his line later in the movie. I love rocks. I lo- I, yeah. I'm a, ge- a geologist. I like rocks. I love rocks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Line. Oh, we have uh, Logan Marshall Green, who we meet earlier. He is um, Holloway. He is like the he's the partner of Shaw, but he's also like her husband. Are they married? Well, I don't believe so. I think they're just love partners. And it's 2093 ain't nobody got time for marriage. It's old no. fashioned. And then we have uh, uh, Amun Elliott and Benedict Wong. They're the the ship pilots. And Ian White, actually, who played the Predator in both Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem, came back to play the engineer, along with Daniel James. Really? Yeah, so good Very for him. Very nice. Good for him, keeping yeah, up, keeping, keeping with the franchises here. 
Just keep getting through all your different alien races, dude. Exactly. Just add them to it. And uh, yeah, Cap, the captain is in a very, he's in a Christmas spirit, man. He is, he's decorating a little tree. Vickers is all like, what's going on here? What are you doing? He's like, come on, we got to make sure we got to, we got to keep the, the time is still moving. We got to continue that. And she's like, well, no shit. Time is moving. What'd you think? It just stopped. <laughs> listen, listen, do you know what that means? It means it's a fucking Christmas movie. <laughs> oh man! I'm just kidding. No, you started not, talking about this at the wrong time. <laughs> no, it's not a Christmas movie. No, carry on. We then have a crew meeting where we meet the ghost in quotations of Peter Wayland and Guy Pierce, and it's really bad old man makeup. Um, we then get told that David is an android, which we're like, we already knew that, but not everybody he's else in the movie did. And he, I, Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no I, he just talks about how he talks about David being kind of like a son to him, and you could just see Vickers is like, fucking asshole. Yeah, which you, of course, find out later, but he's like, aha, he has a penis. He's way better. But does he? <laughs> oh, maybe. We don't they know. Just, they put, put like a floppy ones. Boop, 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 boop. It's just literally a dildo. <laughs> they just glued on. What are we doing about genitals? Just, just <laughs> Somebody's just like... <laughs> That <laughs> suction cups it to him. Oh lord! Well, yeah, the, is that how they do that? They just, eh, they just lick it. Just lick, lick it, stick, bro. All right. Um, <laughs> we then. <laughs> so yeah, Waylon is talking about the whole mission and like what the point of what they're doing is, and Shaw and Holloway are pretty much in charge, and that doesn't that doesn't make Vickers very happy either. No. And uh, yeah, they're like, show us, show us what what's going on. And so they they literally, it's no joke, just a Rubik's cube. They just painted <laughs> different colors. Yeah, boop, yeah. Boop, 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 and it just like projects things. And yeah, they're just showing about the cave paintings, and everybody's like, we went to sleep for two years for that shit. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> and I just like how Charles just like, I just I want to believe that's what's happening. And they're like, man, I really hope we're getting paid good for this. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, what you want, man? Yeah. This doesn't seem really. Well, I like good. how n- none of this was fully explained to anybody before no. they left. If they're no. that surprised by it, like what the fuck, dude? Right? Wouldn't you have like a a meeting with everybody before you got on the ship? Be like, all right, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. It's like, no, we got to keep this a secret because some people just might not come, and we, it's probably hard to find people. So we got to fuck with them. I feel like that's <laughs> a like lawsuit. It's like, ru- like a rushed operation. Oh, absolutely. Like, we just got to go. Well, there's a reason for that, but anyway. Yeah, it, this is where Shaw like explains how, uh, you know, we saw these these cave paintings and they invited us to come. And <laughs> I just want to be the guy in the back who goes, "I don't think that's what they were doing." <laughs> it's it's more like, "Hey guys, this is where we are. Stay right here. away from us. It's not an invitation. Just we're here. Yeah. So you just, know, just letting you know, go around, go way yeah. around. Yeah. And also the fact that she, uh, she also mentions the fact that the engineers helped or they created human uh, humans. Like they that, are that's creators. her. Yeah. That is her. Yeah, that's her idea. theory. Yeah. yeah, her theory. Uh, so we, uh, so Holloway and Shaw have to meet with Vickers, uh, who clearly just puts off villain vibes. This entire conversation, uh, the fact that like, I think she was she was upset that Wayland stated they were pretty much in charge, and she's just like, yeah, well, when you uh, pay one trillion dollars for your mission, then you can make decisions. Yeah. I was like, damn, you suck. And her thing was like, when we get there, if we find them, if they do exist, we don't talk to them. And they're like, what's the point? Why are we right? even going? And to be honest, they probably should have listened to her as much as Vickers is somewhat a villain in this movie. Yep. Probably should have listened. Yep. So David has been learning how to talk to the engineers. He's been learning all the languages and stuff to kind of be the translator of whenever they find them. Mm-hmm. And they land on the planet which it's a very bumpy ride. And they talk about how the, oh, the atmosphere is very similar to ours. And it's like, well, uh, yeah, if it was similar consistency to like uh, a chimney. Yeah. This is like three times this car CO2 of earth or something yeah. like that. It was like, oh, it, uh, it was like, if, oh no, they were like, yeah. If you like shoved an exhaust pipe in your mouth or something like that, that's what it would yeah. be like. Well, I, I will say as talk about beautiful cinematography, the entry to the planet, that whole scene, mm-hmm. like going through the atmosphere and shit, is just gorgeous. And um, Holloway gets all excited because he fly immediately. Like as soon as they land on the planet, they didn't even have to fly anywhere around the planet. It was the they they get through the atmosphere and it's like it's right there. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "What was this?" Thing? God doesn't said, uh, God doesn't create things in straight lines, which that's what he states. 
That's how he's he not necessarily wrong. Things like in a in a perfectly straight line yeah. are generally not very natural. So, so yeah, you know, you see like these mounds. There's like three of them, like spread out, and so they're like, okay, that's where we're gonna go. These are some weird ass igloos. And also, why is everybody gonna be a dick? I mean, I know that David is not. He turns out not to be a very, I mean, the Android, most of the androids in this franchise don't turn out to be good, uh, but like maybe don't treat the android like a piece of shit. Holloway. He's the only one who does too. It's not even like the, everybody else is like everybody else just seems to kind of just leave him alone or at least respect yeah. him enough. But Holloway's just like, yeah, you're an android. You're stupid. Why you have to wear that helmet? It's like, who fucking cares, man? What is your problem? I was, to be honest, I hated Holloway. His character sucked. I didn't like him either. It does suck. Uh, so they venture to the giant mounds on the cool little like quad, like track bikes, like the yes, those, things are, those things are sick. And uh, there's very convenient entryways into the mounds. It wasn't like they had to find some door. It was literally like openings all around the mound that they just could walk right into. Like, all right, cool. We didn't have to well, work I mean, hard for that. Well, I mean, it is built, so that's true. You would, I just you find assume they would want. Uh, it is a convenient thing. That's true. Very convenient. <laughs> um, so Feifeld, he is the geologist, but he's got cool. He calls them his pups. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, they're like, they survey the entire thing. They kind of map it all out, which is really, I, I really like that. I do too. I like the, I like the mapping that they do, but I don't like what is projected. In like on the, the ship. Back the to ship. the ship. Mm. It, it's just, I don't know. It, it's weird. I guess it doesn't really look projected. It looks more like, oh, hey, we took a computer screen and we put it right here, but we're going to cut out the... We're going to cut out around what's not supposed to be there. I agree. It's like a game of worms. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So they find out, so Holloway's like, oh, man, the the atmosphere, everything inside is different than what's outside, so it means it's going to be breathable air, so... You get the whole thing with like, don't take your helmet off. And it's like, oh, my God, I can breathe. And I was like, where did you put your helmet? Everyone took their helmets (laughs) off and then wasn't carrying their helmets anymore. This is the first, my first biggest issue with this movie. I was like, first off, listen, these guys are archaeologists. They are not environmentalists or astrobiologists or anything like that. And they're like, the atmosphere is breathable. Great. The atmosphere is breathable. How do you not know there's some type of particle or something else in the air? Your sensors cannot detect or pick up because it's a foreign fucking planet. Everybody's right. like, fine, just take your helmets off. Yeah. What it should have been is it should have been that dumb fuck take his helmet off and everybody else like, I'm just going to leave mine on because I'm not that stupid. But, but again, I was just like, where did you put it? Everyone That's took true. their helmets off and then just left them at that spot. Did they go back to get them? I was so dumb. Um, I love how this is like we have two like entirely separate hangups on this scene. Where did they all let's go? Where did they go? <laughs> it's a valid it's point. Great. It's a valid point. I never thought of that. Son it's of a, a bitch. valid point. So you I find guess it. they just left them. <laughs> yeah, they they're like, them. leave them by here by the door. Like, it's like your shoes. You take your shoes and you leave your helmet by the door. Yeah. So they, you, they find out that they're terraforming the planet. That's what the engineers came to the planet for to to do. That's their first theory. That's what they initially think when they get there. And we then get to the room that has like the 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 canisters that has the really big head statue in there. Well, they, well, they that, see the, the the projections, projections yes, of the engineers running through the uh, the hallway. Because you see David fucking with shit. Because he knows, but they don't know. He's like, "Fuck it, I don't give a shit about that." Oh, that's right. That might not. I, for some reason, I thought I had a typo. It says uh, David plays. He he's like playing around shit, and he plays with some buttons that uh, tr- d- so he knows how to use a control pl- uh, panel that like then plays those projections. That it's shows like alien bop it. It's yeah, like, he's like bloop, 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 bloop. yeah. That's literally like little bubbles. It's weird. <laughs> Simon, um, <laughs> no, that's, that's later. The, this one's that's, yeah. this is just the writings on the where he, he has so he, he like traces the list. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the the squishies are later. So. His brain to the yeah, just <laughs> yeah, plug it Jack away. in yeah, <laughs> hey, alien resurrection. Oh, there you oh, go, boy. Uh, so yeah, they see the projections, they see the engineers running, and then they notice that there's uh one falls down. So they like, and then they go around the corner, and there's just a body. They're like, oh my god, they're real. And everybody's like, ah, 
And Vickers is like, like whoa! Shit. Check his pockets. <laughs> Look for his wallet. Space wallet. So this is when David, like, somehow gets to a pretty high uh, vantage point where he's messing around with the door and he opens it. He's like, oh my god, it's the head! And everybody, everybody's like, tell him, like, don't fucking open it. And Dave's like, oh, fuck you guys. He's like, yeah, he's he is on his own mission. Does not give a shit about that. Yes, person. yes. Which you find out later why. Uh, so yeah, he they get into the room. They find the head. Of course, that's Shaw's biggest thing is like taking this head back. And they're going through this room that has all these vials that have like this black goo kind of on the top of it. And David is very interested in that black goo. Well, not initially. Initially, they're just, they don't do anything. It's until the room starts heating up because they open the doors. Oh, that's right. And the black goo because, starts, Oh, yeah, because starts. Shaw looks up at the, there's like murals on the top and she's like, oh, it's changing. Yeah, because the atmosphere, because how long has been sealed. Yeah. And uh, that's when Holloway goes to the back of the room and he sees, it looks like a shrine. And it yeah. kind of looks like a xenomorph in a way. Yeah, it does. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And yeah, so w- with the door open, it causes the room to heat up, which causes these canisters to kind of react. And so David kind of looks at it at first. Well, at first he like he t- when he touches the wall, he notices there's this like goo on it. It's not the black goo, yeah. but it's like he like there's a little like green. Yeah, like microorganisms inside of it. Mm-hmm. But then he messes with the black goo and then ends up just taking an entire canister without anyone knowing. <laughs> oh. You also see him step on the dirt in there, and you see the little crawly worms, like, yep. like woo, woo, rise into the dirt. So like, there's a deleted scene where uh, Milburn finds a worm in that scene. Like, he actually, guys, guys, come here, I found something. It's not the worm he finds later. Yeah, yeah. It's a different one. It, it's it, Yeah, he, like, finds something, and it's like, oh, look at that. It doesn't add anything to the scene. Which would be exciting from a biological standpoint. Right. You go to a foreign planet, you yeah. find a foreign life form. So they go out to the outside of the room and uh, they are told that they need to get back to the ship because there's a storm coming and it's like, okay, we're on our way back. And it's like, and Vickers is like, you have 15 minutes or I'm locking the doors, putting the padlock on. You ain't getting on the ship. So they got to get back it quickly. Uh, Feifeld is like, fuck this noise. I like rocks. I'm a geologist. I'm out. And he pretty much like in Milburn are you about this life? And he's like, nah, I'm with you. And then they just disappear. And we're like, bye guys. Yep. Nice knowing you. So they leave. Uh, I like how they vacuum seal the head into a bag. <laughs> Her and the, uh, the doctor there. Uh, yeah. What was the doctor? Ford. Ford. Yeah. And They're like quick for it. She starts breaking down since the environment entered it. Yep. Like trying to seal it up. It's like a big ass ziplock. I mean, here's, here's my thing. Um, so Feifeld, he's got these, he's got these things, right? These pups that are supposed yeah. to survey everything. Does, wouldn't that help you figure out how to fuck to get out of there? Yeah. Cause they get lost. Uh, yeah, they do get <laughs> lost. I don't understand that. Like how he gets lost. Like what the fuck? But car- carry on. But also he's very upset and he has to get really close to Shaw's face. I'm like, I understand you're frustrated, but get the fuck out of my face. Why are you yep. so close to me? I'm not forcing you to do anything. It's not like Shaw was like, you have to do this. It's like, nah, like if you got to go, you want to go get out of here. I'm going to stop you. Uh, So they find, uh, oh no, actually I, I I got everything backwards. Feifeld and um, Milburn, they leave before they even go into the room before they even open the door. Yeah, he's yeah, that's right. That's right. Because they don't want to go in there because they see the big visage of the the engineer's head and like yeah. all that weird shit. Like, yeah, like, we're uh, good. Yep. They're, they're the smart ones. Yep. Fuck them. Well. Except for when they get lost. That's not smart. And dig up stupid. So. D- yeah. So they have to get back to the ship. David ends up taking a vial. One of those big containers. And they. The black goo. Oh, go yeah. The black goo container. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's like spilling all over the floor. You can see the worms. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like rising really up right. from the floor. So yeah, they have to outrun the storm. It's a pretty cool shot where they're like racing up against the storm. And of course they get like, they make it, but uh, she Shaw drops the head. And so she has to go out there and save it. And they talked about how it would rip her, rip them to shreds. Even with the suit on didn't seem to do much to their suits. I wonder if it's still after like prolonged, but yes, they did say that because you could tell this is uh this is pretty scary. looks like some very yeah, sharp items. Spot. 
just flying yeah. at them. So but they look like they're moving really easily too. Cause yeah. Who is it? David comes out and <laughs> it's so and gets him, and his his legs are like it's so goofy, it's like floating. I'm like, okay. It is the goofiest shot ever of him just like strapping it, and then him kind of just like oh, oh yeah. like floating I across. I wonder if they're trying to like make it because he's a synth, like you would be able to like calibrate his body against it, but it just looks weird. It just looks, it just so looks so like he should have had like jets coming out of the bottom of it because he's just like I don't. Know. Yeah, so Holloway goes out there to save Shaw, and then uh, my, uh, David ends up saving both of them. Like, come on, you dumb fucks. We then find out Five Failed and Milborn are still in the pyramid. They call it a pyramid. Even though it's a dome. Yeah. Enough. And they have to stay there until morning, because that's when the storm's going to pass. So, cool. That sounds like fun. So now we get to, we get kind of a flashback to Alien where they're, instead of investigating the uh, facehugger on Kane, they're studying this engineer's head. And this is when you find out, you see the head, which you're like, oh shit, that's the helmet. That's the the face, of the head of the space jockey from Alien. Mm-hmm. Cool. Guess what? This is when Ridley Scott went, guess what? That's not their actual head. That is a helmet. Mm-hmm. Because what what's underneath is just somebody that looks like us. In a way. Yeah, very humanoid esque, yes. Yep. And their bright idea is to shock it enough to make it see feel like it's alive again so it reacts and it goes horribly wrong, causing the head to explode. Yeah, it causes it to start breaking down rapidly yep. and yeah. Not good. No. And of course Holloway's being a little bitch because they didn't find any alive. And he wanted to ask them questions, and she's just like, We literally discovered that they exist the fuck are you so mad about like his dude is so beyond mad well see the thing is though oh my god so the scene where they the head like they start shocking the head and they get it back up they explain something that happens later and this makes this scene seem a little more interesting is they're doing that and they've just got very rudimentary like masks and stuff on like yeah Right, like just you know, I figured they'd have something more heavy duty on because you have a foreign organism. It says it's sterile, but when they start it up, it just starts immediately breaking down. Like once they get it warm yeah. and you know all this, and they have to like seal it away. They start talking about the smell, like it's a biohazard. Put it in the thing and yeah, it, it explodes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. cool shot though when it blows up. Cool practical. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So we find out David's talking to somebody and you're just like, easily you find out it's Wayland. You There's just no, like, who else would he be talking to? And Vickers, mm-hmm. and, and then you kind of get more clarification because Vickers asks him who, what he said. What did he say? What did he say? And then she like pins him out. I was like, I feel like David's strong. I could literally whoop your ass. Uh, yeah, you could. But he kind of just bows to her will. So we then find out that they do a little blood test and they find out the engineer's DNA is identical to human DNA. And it's like, of course it is. That It proves our theory that the engineers created us. Yep. David, and of course we get the scene where, like, like the original Alien where the android is off studying something completely different from everybody else. He's studying the goo in the vial and he takes yep. one little drop of the black goo and gets a twinkle in his eye and is about to do something very, very sinister. Mm-hmm. Also, when they zoom in on his finger, do you notice he has a Wayland logo on his finger on his fingerprint? No, I didn't actually. Good catch. Yeah, it is very weird, but it makes sense. Yeah. And then that's when you get the line. Big things have small beginnings. Mm-hmm. So David and Holloway hang out at the pool table with the balls that are all the same fucking color. How the fuck am I playing pool when all the balls are the same? Metallic material. That's Stupid. Idea. Just looks good. That's Stupid the only reason. rich people. Just buy a fucking regular ball set. Isn't that yes. fancy? Just right. Is that how billiards did it change? Yeah. Nine, like 70 years from now? Yeah. Hey guy, what's you, what are you? Oh, I'm a solid. No, I'm solid. Well, they're all solid. Fuck. <laughs> so Holloway sad because he can't ask the engineers why they were made. And you get this cool, you kind of get a good uh cool back and forth between him and David where you know, because David's an android, he's was created. He has a creator, which are humans, you know, and um, he goes, well, why did you create us? And Holloway goes, because we could. And it's like, well, wouldn't that be disappointing if you asked your creator the same thing? And that's the answer you got. And he's like, yeah, you're, you're not, you're not wrong there. And he's like, let me make you a drink. 
insert. It's still, this whole. <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. So, oh no, he no, just no. he he uh he spikes he spikes it with some alien roofies. Well, I was like this. I mean, I I like this exchange a lot because I I like Michael Fassbender and, and I like his character, and it's even mm-hmm. though he's obviously nefarious. But like this scene does not help Holloway anymore. No, because like I mean. I get he's trying to, like, he's kind of understanding where David's coming from, but he just still comes off as a total fucking prick. Yeah. <laughs> I I can't stand Holloway. Like, there's just no redemption for him. He just he just sucks. He's just such a bitch. Is he, um, like, the main character? Is he, like, Will Smith's character from iRobot? Like, a robot wronged him at some point in his life, and he just doesn't like them or no, something? No, I, just, like, I just, never- just think he expected something completely different. Well, no, I mean, but I'm just talking about how rude he is to David's character know, before all this. So, I mean, like, did he just get I don't care like, to know because, yeah, right. I, I just don't care to know because he just, this character just sucks. Um, so, we then go back to Feifeld and Milborn who find more dead engineers. They're all literally in a pile. And we also see that there's like, they have holes in their, in their chests. Like, they actually have, like, things have come out of them. And you're like, oh, shit. Reference. They're like, this doesn't look like those. It looks like it was pushed out. Yeah. As we reference. Yeah. yeah. The captain then calls them. It's like, hey, there's a ping. So the captain tells them that there's a life form pinging on the map. And they're like, uh, okay. Is it moving? Like, they're asking all these questions. And the captain's just casually like, Nah, it's just kind of sitting there. And then it just disappears like, ah, it's gone. And then he just casually <laughs> walks away. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it blips off for a little bit and then it comes off. Yeah, like, damn, it's man. Weird. These dudes are like in a in an area they've never been to. And the captain's just casually like, yeah, it's fine. It seems okay. <laughs> See you guys in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what? So Sean uh, Holloway, they talk about the discovery. Of course, Holloway is depressed about everything and Shaw's like what are you so depressed about man do you want to get boned and he's like yes that'll make me feel better and so they do it um the allow me to there's like allow me to sow your garden ma'am yeah (laughs) so the scene that they use in the movie is a lot more I mean it's it's still Holloway being a depressing little bitch but (laughs) the the um the version they didn't use was Holloway was such a piece of shit and he still gets laid at the end. Like he's literally like just being such an asshole, like telling her like, you know, like throwing like her mom, like if this ha- would have happened, you know, your dad, w- your mom could have been around longer. Your dad could have been around longer. Like he's just being a fucking like to the point where she slaps him and like he like kind of comes back at her and then they kind of just angrily make out. And then, of course, they bone. Um, That's stupid. I hate yeah, that. it was so <laughs> stupid. I was so happy they didn't. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's... they didn't show that. Uh, also, I missed the the. Did I miss the scene where we saw Patrick Wilson? Or was that later? You know, who Patrick Wilson is from Aquaman no. and the Conjuring movies, and absolutely not. Well, she played her. She he played oh, her yeah. dad. It's the flashback. Yeah, yeah, that was isn't that earlier when like when he's David's like... looking at the dreams. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's which, right. He now you want to talk about Idris Elba's southern accent? Not great, but not. Horrific. Patrick Wilson's British accent, horrific. Holy yeah. shit. St- why? <laughs> Just be an American. Who cares? I understand your daughter's mm-hmm. English, but wow. Horrible. He's yeah, you also... Could have been <laughs> You could have been like American and just your your wife have been English. Exactly. And you just got the accent. But from instead, we got this sense. terrible accent. He's also another like big time actor who gets like a tiny ass role in a in an alien movie because in the next yep. alien movie we're going to talk about there's another big time actor well not much anymore uh who just kind of gets off to, in the first like five minutes of the movie <laughs> oh cool I'm yeah excited. i'll look forward to that when we watch it um so we then get the scene with the captain and vickers oh you also find out shaw can't get pregnant she's like infertile and I said, yes. Shaw can't ha- have kids. And then it's time to test that out because they immediately have sex afterwards. Because he, um, he keeps sticking to the wrong fucking hole. I know. It's not going to work that way. No, dude. So, yeah. So the captain and Vickers, they flirted it up and the captain gets an invite back to her room. I'm like, oh, boy. Look yeah, he's like, you. <laughs> he's playing his little like, um, what is it? 
An accordion. Accordion. Oh, yeah. the little accordion. Yeah, like or the accordion. Yeah, whatever that thing is. There was. I got you ass in the future. That works, dude. Well, I mean, Idril. Uh, Idris Elba is Idris Elba. Idris Elba. That's it. I got it flipped. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even need an accordion for no. most people. So no, fuck. no, no. So Feifeld and Milborn they hang out in the Black Goo Room. I was like, that's a horrible place to hang out. And that's... yeah, because they're like they the ping is the opposite side of the map. So like, well, let's go all the way over here, and that's where they end up going. Yeah. So. And that's when they find this snake-like creature that very much resembles a face hugger in a way. Like the design of it, it, it kind of looks like a cobra, but yeah. with its teeth under, like it's a it's a really cool design. I like it. It's a, they uh, call it the hammerpede. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it wraps itself around Milburn, and that's when uh, Fifield cuts it, and it sprays its blood onto his mask, which you find out is acid blood, which then melts his ma- the mask of his helmet to his face, which is just yeah, vacuum awful. forms it. It's like. Oh. Whoop. <laughs> And uh, the then he worm, falls into the goo. Yeah, he falls into the goo, and the worm makes its way into uh, Milburn's suit, and then just goes down his throat. It just goes inside of him. Yeah, it's fucking. Awesome. Dude, he and like it, okay. I, I think this is just him being a biologist and being excited. But you see this animal that's doing something you have no idea what's it. Why are you fucking like? Why he just is like? I'm gonna go closer. I might. I might kiss it. Like, what are you doing? Five is a smart one. He's like, stop fucking with it, dude. Leave it alone. Fivefield, to be honest, even though he's kind of a prick, because like when Milburn and Fivefield meet in the beginning of the movie, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to get paid. I'd, I'm not here to make friends. And so you're like, ah, oh, he's the kind of the the strong boy douche character. But like, he's a smart character. He just got an, an unfortunate hand by getting lost <laughs> inside yeah, this yeah. place. But yeah, Milburn, you deserved <laughs> yeah. what you got. Um, the next scene, morning, very dramatic. Yeah. The next morning, uh, Holloway wakes up. He's not feeling so great. He actually looks and there's like little worms coming out of his eye, which freaks him out. Yes. There's an extended yes. scene where Shaw walks up to him and is like checking him out, too. She doesn't see the worms, but she's like, oh, you don't look so good today. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm glad they cut that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't like that either. Um, so, yeah, the crew goes out to find Fifield in Milburn and there is no sign of them until they find they go back into the goo room. And they find uh, Milburn's body like face down in the goo. Yep. And they turn him over and he's got a huge hole coming out of his mask. They're like, oh, shit. And Uh, they don't find Fifield, do they? Nope. I mean, Fifield finds them. Uh, David goes out on his own mission to find what the probe had been picking up because there was that one pup that was just sitting in one spot, just constantly sending off a signal. So David goes to that signal. He opens it up. And he finds it's all a room full of those canisters, like literally on the walls. It's full of them. And he's like, oh, well, this doesn't look good. And then he goes into a chamber where he finds it's the chamber room where where the engineers are like in their own hypersleep. And you get to see the. um, Oh, no, I don't think that you get to see the seat yet. The seat that the the engineer sits in. It's coming to it, but something else has to happen. Yeah, Yeah, because it because it comes out of the floor. Yeah. And yeah, and he cuts off Vickers because Vickers is watching the whole thing and he cuts her off. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yep. So they the crew ends up finding the chamber from earlier. Oh yeah, and they find Milburn. I already talked about that. I'm all over the fucking place here. Uh Holloway's not looking so good. So they have to yeah, carry his ass back. Yeah, he's all fucked up. <laughs> and we get the worm, we get like a worm jump scare. Yeah, because it's when they're checking out Milburn. You're like, there's something in his mouth. Yeah, there's like, yeah. <laughs> it shoots out. Get the fuck out of your home. Wow. <laughs> and my next note was this: this next part feels familiar. Sick crewmate <laughs> needs to quarantine. <laughs> and, and, and then oh, you, oh. and then you have a crew member who's like, no, we're not letting the sick person on because Vickers kind of plays the the Ripley role in this scene when they get back to the ship. I mean, the thing is, is like Holloway is like, no, I can't go back on there. Just leave me. Like, it wasn't like he was. Yeah. I'm fine. Uh, no, he knows he's fucked. So yeah, and yeah, he right. legit just sacrifices himself because she, of course, we got to get our flamethrower. Flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because Vickers like like Vickers is like, dude, listen, this, obviously this takes place like seven to eight years beforehand. She's like, I remember COVID-19 and just lights the fucker. Yeah, up. like we're not letting him on here. Yeah, he. I mean, he sacrifices himself. He literally walks onto the ship like with his arms up, like, "Take me, take me." 
He's like, do it, because he yeah. said he is in fucking rough shit. Yeah, he's like, you can see like the the veins and stuff starting to sink in, and he just he's looking possessed. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so David, we then go back, and David activates the room. He gets to see the he sees more projections of the engineers coming in, and they're doing their whole thing, and then he sees that really cool like universe hologram that -hmm. shows everything and it just sits on earth though because like when it all shuts off you see earth is just sitting it's the only thing left on the projection you're like oh shit did you notice if you look at the containers the four hyper chambers or sleep chambers they have there one of them has a hole blown through it yep yep i did see that because it showed it from the (laughs) like a top view as they're coming as he's walking in it shows like above yep yep it's pretty cool so yeah david i mean it's a really cool scene you know david like kind of like becomes part of the hologram yep and and you kind of you kind of get the hint like the engineers weren't terraforming this planet they were here to they they were pretty much there to take those canisters of goo and bring it and go to earth to pretty much destroy earth yeah, because I'm going to talk about this now because it might make a little sense, a little more sense. So the, the black goo, it has an actual designation, but I don't want to, it's like numbers and letters, like everything is in this series, which is, it's a lot like that in real life, though we designate other planets and stuff. It's usually like, we don't name them all after gods or whatever. Sometimes it's just a number, a series of numbers and letters. Like this one is LV223. Yep, yep. Was where they're at. Yep. Not LV426 from the original, or the original Alien movies. But, um... <clears throat> Anyway, the black goo does three things. It either it kills it whatever it gets into, it mutates whatever it comes into contact with, or it generates new life. So there you go. Have fun. That that's what it does. So the engineers originally when they were on Earth, they used it to create life on Earth. Yeah. Which, it was Which is what we saw at the beginning. Yes, yes. So it's not all bad necessarily but it could but that was their plan weaponized that but yes. that was their ultimate plan was to take those canisters and destroy humanity because they yeah. probably saw that humanity is fucking terrible and they're like well we gotta we can't let this go on too much longer <laughs> well and also and also you gotta think uh between the beginning when humanity is made there's no obviously estimate of time put from when humans were created right to life in general on earth was created and then ultimately the I mean we know when the it's the we learn later when the engineers were last at this establishment. Yeah. So like I mean it's a it like it just shows the power of like it can be used in different ways, the the black goo. Yeah, so Vic or Holloway is gone and you know Shaw's in distress and she wakes up and she's being examined by David and he tells her that she's pregnant. And that she's three months pregnant. And she's like, that's impossible because we just had sex 10 hours ago. He's like, well, what's inside you isn't, isn't human pretty much. And it ages a lot quicker uh, than human. So, and she's just like, well, get this thing the fuck out of me. Cut it out of me. I don't want this thing in me. And he's like, don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. Like, fucking David, you bastard. Now you're, now you're getting a lot of those ash vibes. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then he like he he tells her he he's like sympathizing with her because he's like, oh, I know it. You must be in pain, blah blah blah. Because it's you know the way that he died is similar to how your father died. Didn't your father die from um, Ebola? Ebola. And she's like, how the fuck did you know that? Mm-hmm. And he goes, I watched your dreams. Like, all right, <laughs> creepy. So uh, Shaw attacks some of the crew as she's being examined again. And they're about to put her in hyper. They're going to put her in stasis. Yeah. And take her back with the embryo. Son of a bitch. That's how all these things go. (laughs) Well, it does make sense. So, so, so hear me out. Since this takes place earlier in the timeline, it makes sense why the Nostromo was targeted to go to this other planet in the first film by Waylon Utani. Yeah. So this is where they learned about this stuff, and it makes sense why the first film went the way it did. 
So yeah. a believed engineer outpost, like, oh, there's one on this planet, they're nearby. We need to get them to go there and check it out. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So, so he was thinking a little bit when he wrote this. I know not everybody's happy about it, but there are some proper likes. There was some coherency to something. Make of everybody this. happy. Um, yeah, right. So she makes so she makes her way down to the med pod and she gets the her baby removed and it's just a giant it's oh, just a dude. squid monster this thing is this terrifying but this whole thing is like great body horror oh yeah because she's like she's like writhing around she's bleeding her stomach's like all over yeah. the place before she even gets to the tube she's got like that fucking anesthetic anesthetic or whatever just yeah. like in the pod she's like getting gutted open and stuff mid thing then she jabs herself to get through it it's just blood all over the place yeah. and there's this fucking squid it's just, and... it's just like <laughs> she pulls the fucking umbilical out of herself oh, yeah it's she her acting is so good in this like her physical it's a great, acting. this is probably her best the best scene of the entire movie for like physical acting and like you said body oh, yeah. horror because it literally is just like slicing her open then they got the little things that like spread it apart you got the claw that goes inside, takes out the oh. squid. She pulls out the umbilical cord. And then as it's fucking, ah, it, they have to staple her back up. Yes. And she's just like, oh, yeah. ah. <laughs> it's, it's like, is this what you use to build houses? Oh, <laughs> Lord. I, my favorite part, though, because it always makes me laugh, is when characters narrate the things they're doing on computers. She's like, abdominal surgery. I'm like, why do you have to say it? Yeah. Yep. So we know. <laughs> Thank you. I Thanks love when she's narration. trying to get out of the container and the squid's wiggling. Yeah, and so she, she has, has to like slide, slide under, yeah. underneath of it. And those the little you know the little aliens like squid like mother, why have you forsaken me? It's just like the alien from Resurrection, where it's like mama, and then gets sucked out of a fucking hole the side an inch. <laughs> except this, except this is done better. Oh, absolutely. I do like it sucked out of the hole, but this whole scene is just fucking fantastic. So my note was, congratulations, you've got a squid. <laughs> it's kind of like yes. Men in Black. <laughs> Uh, Jay, something's peeking. <laughs> no, dude, it just, it, I just scared like a generation of like girls from ever having babies that watch this movie in the theater. Oh, absolutely. Nope, not happening. Absolutely. <laughs> not a generation. So, well, yeah, but they've been younger people. But anyway, go ahead. So we then get the captain getting a notification that Five Fields like uh, cameras back up on his helmet. Like, what's going on? And so the guys are like, let me go investigate. As soon as I see what Five Field looks like, I am fucking like, shut the door. Shut the door. This yeah. man's legs are in front of his head. <laughs> like, let's check his file. It doesn't say he's a contortionist. Get out of there. <laughs> he's like, like, they see they see the, secur the security cameras or whatever. Can they not tell that he's crumpled up like a pretzel? Like, eh? Hey, right. Yeah, he does. There's a camera from there because they showed that angle earlier in the film. I'm yeah, I don't know. Down there. But that was, I, I would have been like, nope. Shut the door yeah. now. Nah. So, nah. yeah, so he's controlled by the black goo. Like he's got, the, it, he looks terrifying. They actually shot it twice. So they actually, uh, the, uh, one of the other ways they shot it was to make him look more xenomorph like, like not like a xenomorph, but he had like the body structure of a xenomorph. Like his head was very elongated. Yeah. Uh, and he had like his appendages were skinny and xenomorph like. Look, yeah. I, look it up on like YouTube. It's actually pretty cool to see. It's the same exact scene. Like it goes through the entire scene, but the way uh, uh, Feifeld looks is different from I'll what check we it. get in this movie. I'll check it out. But I kind of like I I like the concept of this one because oh, like, it's like where where, where it, um, it it just kind of makes them. You like I talked about it mutates. It either mm -hmm. makes life mutates things or creates monsters. And like how it just mutated him into this rage machine, this killing yeah. rage machine. That's and he, he just gets like gadded a few times and like he didn't go down like he just fucking yep. goes. Yeah, he got run he gets run over by one of the vehicles and then uh the captain comes out and flame throws his ass. Yeah, for this fuck. So then Shaw is wandering around after a surgery just all bloody and in pain and she finds out that Wayland is alive cuz he's being he's been on the ship the whole time. And he is been there cuz he wants to meet his maker. Yep. Uh, he thinks he thinks there's a way uh, to get something out of the engineers to prevent death, to pretty much make him live forever. It's like, boy, you you seem like you've gone too far. Yeah, just, well, yeah. 
And she, this is where I believe she tells them, she's like, no, no, no. This isn't what we thought it was. This is not, yeah. this isn't like an open invitation. Like, hey, guys, we're just having an intergalactic kegger, you know, none of that shit. <laughs> said, God, where's Rick Torn when you need him? Oh, wait. I know, damn um, it. He should have been. No, no I still want to. Uh, I, I don't want to change captains, I, I, but Rip Torn should have been there. No, it just was great. Uh, but he figures out, the captain figures out what, what's going on, like what's happening on this planet, that the engineers, it's not the engineers' home planet like they thought, and that they were, that they were only there to make a weapon to wipe out civilizations. Yeah. And we can't let it leave the planet. We can't let, can't bring it back home. No. Nope. We then get... So there's some smart people on this boat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just love though in the beginning where he's just like I just I just fly the ship. <laughs> yep, That's all I do. And uh, Waylon and Vickers they have a nice conversation. Um, it, it it was this one was also filmed two different ways. Where um she so in the version we get in the movie she kind of just comes in kind of guns blazing, like pretty much has no positive no none of the positives to say to him. In the alternate version, there's she kind of apologizes. She's like happy he's there. Like she makes it out like, you know, you know, I'm sorry. She like apologizes to him and shit. And it just, it just seemed out of place. Yeah. So then you find out that he is her father. And I was like, oh, of course she's like this. It's because she has daddy issues. Mm-hmm. That is literally the reason that her and it's not a joke either. Like that is the reason she is the way she is. It's because. Yep. She has never been good enough for her father. So we, they venture out to the room with the engineer because the, you know, at first they like, they want Shaw to be there. And then of course she's in pain the entire time. I love that. It's not just, it's not kind of swept under the rug. Like she is in pain for the rest of the movies. Like she's always like, you know, holding her stomach, falling down. Wincing and shit. Like, I love that. Very good continuity for that. Well, like where she, has to put her suit on. Yeah, she zips it up. She zips it up. You know that has to hurt. Yeah. So Shaw becomes very suspicious of David, and um, it should have been a while ago that you should have been suspicious of him. And uh, the captain finds out that there's a ship underneath the mount. Like, holy shit, that's a ship. Because, like, the it, it gets mapped out. Yeah. So uh, they get to the room. David explains the engineer's mission uh, pretty much to destroy Earth. David... It's going to be a test, test bed for their new chemical. Yep. And Oh, uh, oh by the way... Oh, 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 sorry, go ahead. No, what's up? I was, I was going to say it's been 2,000 years, by the way, since the, that, the, the incident of the engineers. It's theorized... This is where they talk about it, I believe, is that the, 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 chem, the, the chemical got out the black agent got out on this establishment and it's been 2000 years since they did that. Mm, okay. So they say that in the movie. So it actually got, that's why there's all the dead and they're all running to get to that thing. And the dude's head gets chopped off by the door. Yeah. And why I think the head broke down when it got like live and back up and stuff, the, the goo was still inside of it. Uh... When, it when it got up to temperature and stuff, because the goo doesn't do anything below a certain temperature. It's almost like it goes into like hibernation or stasis. That's why they kept uh... the room cool and it affected it when the doors opened. So that makes sense. So yeah, David ends up waking up the engineer and uh, he's not happy. He doesn't speak in this version. There is an alternate version where he does speak mm-hmm. uh, in its in his own language. And it's it, like it's a longer just conversation between the engineer David and Wayland. And then of course mm-hmm. you have the whole thing where like Shaw is trying to get answers and Wayland's like, shut her up. Next time she says something, you shoot her. And I was like, okay. So the whole scene could have just been, uh, where, where David is talking to the engineer. I literally just got the scene with Emotep and Benny. <laughs> oh, the language of the slaves you could be useful like that's just what i thought of i was yeah. like oh okay <laughs> yeah. the, the only thing i liked about the alternate version was that you get a conversation where wayland is explaining the fact that he created david so he uh, he and the engineers are very similar mm-hmm. uh you know and so he wants to know their ways and all that and that's why the engineer turns and rips off david's head Oh, okay. So you're saying it probably should have been left in the movie. It would have added more context. Yeah, it was. I mean, it might have just been a little long, but 
I liked oh, okay. the explanation of, and it kind of made sense of why the engineer just would just turn and just rip David's head off. Like, oh shit! He's like, we made you. We could do with you what we want with you. It's kind of like the whole Jurassic Park ideology. Like, yeah, they you know, some people think they created them. They have no rights, so they can do whatever the fuck they want with it. Yeah, I just and mad uh, because he got woke up from a nap early. Right, well, where's my fucking coffee? <laughs> Been down for two thousand years. I need to go to su- my space Starbucks. We can just call it Sunbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> Car- well, carry on. Xenobucks. Um, Xenobucks. Oh, please. Oh, my gosh. It's massive. <laughs> uh, Knock this shit back. I love it, though, that, they, that the, the, uh, the engineer rips off David's head and then beats Waylon. Karma, <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> motherfucker. I said, good night, Waylon. And he just fucks up the rest of the crew that's there, tossing them around. And yeah. and Shaw's like, peace out, I'm out. And she's already like halfway back. <laughs> she's like, fuck this dude. Like, And uh, after all that happens, I just love that Vickers just like, well, I guess it's time to go home. Yep. Yeah. So the engine, this is when you see the chair. The chair comes out of the floor. The engineer gets into his chair and we're like, ah, alien. <laughs> yep. Yep. So it comes full circle. And Shaw then has to radio to the captains like, you got to crash the ship. Like, we can't let this ship, you know, leave. And, uh, you know, at first, like, Vickers is trying to talk him out of it because he's like on board. He's like, oh, all right. Because he knows he's got to pretty much he's got to die. And Vickers is like, well, fuck. So she's got to get out of there. She he tell him, yeah, the Yannick tells him, he's like, get to your fucking capsule and eject. Yep. Like, get to it and inject. Yep. We'll jettison your unit so you can, you know, you've got however long of blah, blah, blah on that. Yeah. She's rushing to, to get out of there. And Did the I other point, two pilots oh, are also on yeah. board as well. I point out that, like, Shaw is running, like, you know, as, as the ground's opening up and she's, like, jumping between things. And I'm just thinking, like, just, just, just run, just run to the left. Oh, get off that's of not even the dumbest fucking decision you could make. That comes up third. real fucking soon. Yeah, there's another go to the left moment here in a minute, but she's running and jumping. These guys like just go to the left, just just go to the left. <laughs> he can hear you. He doesn't need to see oh, you. Oh <laughs> no! So the engineer. So yeah. So the uh, Vickers escapes, and the Prometheus becomes a bullet dead set for the engineer's craft, and it it impacts it, causing the Prometheus to blow up and the craft to crash. And Vickers. Yeah, Vickers crash lands on her little pod there. And this is when you get possibly the dumbest fucking thing. Probably one of the dumbest decisions in movie history. And that yes. is the ship comes down in and like a crescent. Like it looks like a moon and it's rolling. And instead of running to the right or the left to get out of its way. Listen, I know it's huge. OK, I know it's a big just gonna run it's a big it. thing. Just run the why are you running alongside the thing <laughs> you're running yeah, left or right the shaw figures was, it out she's like i'm gonna get the fuck out of here but yeah, then like, somehow nobody, gets back under it again i was confused dude listen i thought that whole thing was uns- like if you wanted an excuse to kill off vickers so you can think ways. of a lot better way to do it than this shit so many other ways. i assure you yeah. dude listen like just just have the fucking have her get out of the way and then her and Shaw can go to the capsule, and then like the engineer can show up and just punch her fucking stomach plug, just mm. the hole straight through, just the chunk right out of oh, her. Oh yeah, that would have been way cooler than what we got here. Yeah, yeah, um, I gotta make a cow cool reference. But yeah, she gets squished, and she deserved it hundred percent. And uh, Shaw somehow gets back under it, but it gets saved by a rock. Like a rock prevents it from crushing her, and I was yeah. like, okay, like like that's gonna happen. She gets to Vickers craft her little pod there and uh, she finds the the axe with the curviest handle I've ever seen. This thing was like almost a boomerang, a boomerang with an axe like head on it. Like, what the fuck is that? Dude, she does look like a badass, though. She does. Like, like she's coming full circle. It's like a, a badass heroine character here. So so this like, scene is going to throw it and it's going to come back to her. Yeah. Boomerang fish act. Yeah. So she goes in there and immediately goes to the room where the med pod was. There's an alternate version where she actually goes to the bar and uh, takes some drinks before she then goes to that room to see that the squid has gotten bigger and is in there. But well, then so, so we're heavily medicated. 
we had a massive surgery done on us not long ago. Let's just knock back some drinks. Uh, yeah, fuck it. fuck it. When you're in the situation you're yeah, in here, true. you don't fucking care. But sure, I actually just... like the alternate scene because it, um, David's head communicates to her and says, hey, he's coming for you. And she's like, who? And she hears the door starting to get smashed in and she hides behind the bar. And the engineer comes in and he kind of explores the room because he's he, this is new to him. So he's like, there's like the chandelier thing that's got all the sparkly things. He's like oh. running his hand through it. He sees the screen. He's like exploring this the room great. until he hears uh, he hears Shaw behind the bar and he oh. kind of peeks over and then we get the fight. OK, because they because he does the whole he's coming for you in the normal. Version, but as soon but as not. she backs yeah. up, he comes around the corner and gets her. Yeah, so I'll have to watch that because that seems like a very interesting scene to watch. Yeah, I like, I'll have to watch that one. That would be that would be kind of that'd be cool because it makes sense. He wouldn't like obviously he wants to find her or whatever or get out, but like this would be all like you said, all one hundred percent new to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's no different than it's literally the same thing that characters in this movie just did going to where he was. Like he wouldn't right. see these things. Yeah, that they have invented or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, she's, of course, she's not going to win this fight because he is a lot bigger. I'll just a little bit. And uh, she opens up the door where the squid attacks him. Should we and... mention that the engineers are like nine feet tall and fucking massive? Oh, they're huge. Well, the but you got to think an alien. Are like seven feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. You also got to think an alien when they first discover the space jockey. It's huge. Like, I feel like yeah. it's even bigger. So they, I they feel like they sized them down in this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this squid thing is huge. It attacks the engineer. And you get a very face hugger like attack on him where it shows like the thing that goes into his mouth. Um, yeah. And you're like, well, this must be kind of like a pre like this is like the yeah. first evolution of the face hugger. Yeah, the trilobite. Yeah, they call it, which makes sense because the trilobite's very old, you know, because arthropods. So. Yeah. And, and it's definitely very face hugger like because as soon as it injects itself into the engineer it dies it literally dies on top of him it's like squeeze and i'm out it was like (laughs) (laughs) so yeah david convinces shaw to come save him and she's like why do i do why would i do that i love the alternate version because she does the same thing she goes and and grabs his head but she's not very nice to it she like picks him up and just like throws him in the bag like like very aggressively and like zips him up (laughs) I mean, <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't. I would a lot per- much prefer but, that. Cup. But then the Cut. very next shot, it's him out of the bag. I'm like, why'd you take him out of the bag? But I love when when she's like, she's roping down his body and it's just like, <laughs> I'm so relaxed. I would have been like, bye. Well, it doesn't want to break him entirely. No, just some of his be fine. But the the thing that confuses me, right? David clearly is a sketchy motherfucker, right? One, why would you save him? Well, he talks her into saving her because he knows how to fly one of the other ships. Why the fuck would you let him take another ship that's full of this these canisters just to get yeah. off the planet? Like, she literally said, neither of us are leaving this planet. You probably should have just sacrificed yourself. Just say, well, I'm going to die on this planet. Because he he preyed on her ultimate thing. Her, her one weakness is her her thirst for knowledge and her yeah. curiosity. It's like, yeah, I because, can take you to where they're from. Yeah. Which, uh, in an alternate version, an alternate shot, they call it paradise. That's where the, the engineers are from. That's what they call it. Mm. Where they don't mention it in this one. Yeah, um, it's too much religion. I mean, there's enough religious symbolism. But again, uh, it's I just a stupid... Handed. Yeah, but again, it's just a stupid thing where she's like, I want to go talk to them and ask them why. And it's like, really? You're, you're really? He doesn't, David, David doesn't give a fuck. He's like whatever you know it's not I'll, even david I it's just I want. stupid like you know what they're doing you know like do you think they're just gonna be like here let's have a sit down and we'll tell you what we're planning like no they're gonna kill you as soon as you get there <laughs> i guess i wonder if it's just like i mean i guess they could go back home but they won't they don't, don't want to take that craft and everything back to earth yeah so i guess she just figures she's dead anyway so she's like fuck it but it's still yeah. i agree i mean i i i I wouldn't trust David. Fuck him. I, I wouldn't put his fucking body back together. That's for damn sure. I'd leave him as a head in a damn jar. It's You'll funny. have to teach me how to push the little gummy worm buttons. They look like the fucking glow worms from <laughs> Pitch Black. <laughs> <laughs> and then play uh, a little fife or whatever. Yeah, and then uh, she puts in her final log. We gotta have that, just like the original Alien. 
And then we see the first iteration, I guess, of the Xenomorph or something very similar to one that bursts out of the engineer. Yeah, they, they, it's named the Deacon, yeah. is what they call it. And uh, But you got to think, is this iteration of the black goo that's used in this movie is at from their timeline, their time, 2,000 years old. Yeah. So, this so is I like, don't know what happens This is like an covenant. ancient xenomorph. Yeah, so I don't know what happens in the covenant. I've never seen it. I literally have Ooh, upstairs shrink wrap. Strap in, motherfuckers! <laughs> I, I, I have heard, I've seen the trailers, I've heard, and I know there's a reference to what happens in what's its alien in that movie or organism in that movie and a reference to how alien three was originally supposed to go. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Anyway, I, I'm excited to see it. I do not have my hopes up because I've heard it's not very good, but I'm looking forward to it. I still like this movie a lot. I, I like this movie way more than I thought I was going to. I think I like it more the second time than I did the first time. Because I, like I said, I understood more of it. Like the things I was pointing out, like the connections to the old movie and just from a, biological interest standpoint that I have. Yeah. I just really like I, I after watching it last night, I, I still I still enjoy this movie. I don't think I mean, does it have its issues? Of course it does. Yes. Uh, is yes. it is it nearly as good as the original alien or aliens? No, absolutely not. No. But I feel this, you know, having having it be Ridley Scott giving us some sort of like an origin to certain things. Yeah. Um I I'm okay with it. And I, I enjoy it even today. I I I don't know how I'm gonna feel. I, I have I've only seen Covenant once. Don't remember liking it very much. Uh yep. and I've haven't heard anything good about it from anybody else that I've talked to about this movie or watched other podcasts who've covered this movie, uh, which is very a uh, very small amount. Uh but I'm very interested to see how it is. I know it's it's it 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 takes what this movie does and kind of throws a lot of it away. Okay. So that's just hearing that is disappointing, but the Xenomorph yeah. returns. So, I mean, it's called yeah. Alien, so they got to have Xenos, right? Well, yes. Yes and no. And it's got a good that cast. Has, That's the only that thing. Te- the cast was pretty good. Yes, that actually, this one in this movie technically has a different name. So, that yeah, that's uh, that's about it for Prometheus. So now we're going to go over to Twitter and Instagram, and we're going to talk some comments that you all left us and we got quite a few so let me go to my Good. let me go to my bookmarks here that is not the bookmarks section here twitter <laughs> bastards all right and we uh our our good buddy michael howe is back to give us a gigantic thread on his theories on this movie oh boy so okay. we're gonna save his for last okay thank you and seen hey he hasn't commented in a while has no, he no he and he loves to leave us these massive these massive theories and threads and i i always read them I always read them, but I will leave Thank them you, for, for last. Uh, our first comment on Twitter is from uh, No on 15 and all cast. It says, like anything Ridley Scott, it's an acquired taste. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I under- respect your opinion. I mean, Ridley Scott. I like Gladiator and shit like that. So Yeah, I think when it comes to Ridley Scott, I think it's more of his stuff probably from, from Prometheus on. Probably. Uh, the next one is from Nerdstalgic Podcast. Says, I loved it honestly. I have this movie on Blu-ray and I've never had an issue with it, even its sequel. I loved. All right, cool. Oh, interesting. So to, to see some well, love for covering it as somebody. Well. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Our next one is from our uh, friends over at So Wizard Podcast. It said one of the best trailers in the movie is a wet fart. What a disappointment. <laughs> Oof to May. <laughs> <laughs> our next one is from uh, Canary PI Podcast. Says it had a bunch of problems, but I enjoyed it. That's All fair. right. Uh, we uh, our next one is from our friends at Cinema Trip Reviews who said I totally get some of the hate for the film, but I've always enjoyed it for what it was. The next one is from the Film Spark Pod that said I always enjoyed this film. That's uh, a lot of the comments are either I didn't like this or I like this. Uh, we got a couple comments from Michael, our, our our normal. He said, "Oh boy, I may have one of my multi-thread <laughs> posting for you all with this. I do have a crazy no, fan theory. Kidding. I could." <laughs> This, Holy crap! It's this. It's strap in, everybody. It's, 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 oh, she just scrolled through. I, I don't use, like I said, I don't read these. But she just scrolled through. It's like bop, 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 bop. Like, it's okay. it's a big one, guys. So here we go. It's, a, it's quite a bit. All right. So it starts off with I. I never was a major fan of the Alien films, but I was intrigued to what Ridley Scott would do with Prometheus. I remember taking my dad to see it when he was in town, 
we can usually gel with some sci-fi films, but this was one film that just didn't work so well. This felt like a film that had a lot of ideas, but rather than maybe narrow the focus, decided to juggle a lot of stuff in the air, thinking the audience would be enthralled by everything. It's like Brad Bird's Tomorrowland, where you're waiting to just be swept away. And just like Tomorrowland, a place I blame squarely on Damon Lindelof, who seems to work better in an episodic television scenario with a two to three hour film, the film at times feels like it is too big, given the stuff we heard about Wayland or non-used story elements. It also doesn't help that pretty much the entire crew I didn't really find myself connecting with. After a while, the focus seems to pull onto Elizabeth Shaw and David or uh, our Ripley and Ash of this film. There's a strange uh, naivete, uh, naivete, I can't say that word, Shaw exhibits that just seems to scream virgin in the film. And it never feels one can see why she and Charlie Holloway are a couple. <laughs> Unless she finds his douchey attitude to turn on. <laughs> well, uh, I've seemed to have known a lot of ladies that end up with pieces of shit and mm. also a lot of dudes that end up with women that are pieces of shit. So it happens in real life. Yeah. And yeah, Charlie also seems to have horror movie jocks stamped on his back, ignoring protocol, (laughs) insulting the android, though expecting to find alien life, finding them dead, and then whining and crying into his drink that they're dead. We we stayed that quite a bit. Uh, David is certainly very intriguing, and it makes me wonder what might have been had Scott chosen to make him the focal point rather than trying to make Shaw Ripley 2.0. He could probably see what it is... Uh, what is a curious android then start concocting his own plans outside the mission some intriguing bits of body horror but yeah in the end i realized that prometheus reminded me of those horror movies where you soon don't care what happens to the kids that was one observation i made afterwards such as shaw being the virgin charlie the jock etc the engineers as they're called also don't give us uh, us much to do on with their enigmatic plans let alone those seem smaller than the one's body from the original alien after a number of years, I had a crazy fan theory. These were not the engineers who made those drawings. What did these clueless humans and Wayland find? They found the frat boy engineers, most likely their older adult counterparts when the other side of the planet. Don't worry. I'll explain these insane theories in a moment about frat boy engineers. Okay. (laughs) And here we go. We got theories now. All right. Theory number one. This is all from the same guy from Michael Howe. Theory one, the opening is part of a hazing ritual. Numerous frat boy engineers are set on different planets, but only one is given the cellular breakdown Reese's peanut butter cup. And it was this guy who didn't get to be part of the fraternity. Theory two, the holograms are another hazing gone wrong. The frat engineers stole the black goo from the lab on the other side of the planet, dared one guy to drink it and then escaped, hoping no one would realize their fuck up. Theory three, The frat engineers find enlightenment in music and astrology, but also when David finds the one in his pod, he's the one guy still suffering from a massive hangover years and years. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Theory four. When David wakes the engineer up, his head is aching like a motherfucker and these stupid little creatures won't stop chittering away. So he tries to shut them up because of the pounding in his head. So that's why David gets his head ripped off. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Theory five. So, frat engineer needs to get some aspirin and some food, so he fires up his older bro's spacecraft and hopes the nearest 7-Eleven is still open. (laughs) Fucking hell. Okay, theory six. LV 7-Eleven. Unfortunately, the stupid little creatures mistake his hangover as a planned alien invasion and mess up his older brother's sweet ride, so now frat engineer is hungover and freaking out that his brother is going to beat him for the ship destruction. Theory seven. So like any muscled frat boy who thinks he's justified in his hangover, hungover anger, the engineer attempts to take it out on Shaw, but then the last vestiges of that frat prank from years ago comes back to haunt him. When that goo, uh, when the goo they stole now transformed into something David crafted goes alien on him, thus bringing the stupid fraternity's last member to an end. To me, all that frat boy engineer stuff is the only way I could justify all the unanswered decisions that these engineers were making. So in conclusion, some intriguing ideas, but Prometheus' serious sci-fi angle suffers from a number of factors, and it doesn't bode well for those seeking answers in a sequel. Wow. Fair enough. Well Michael crafted. Howe. Not said. Damn. That was a lot. I could, def- I could definitely see the uh, satirical theories you have here. I, I like... I could see those lining up, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, 
I will say, obviously I don't agree with them, but I respect. Uh, I don't think everything needs to be answered. No. We didn't get answers in any of the other movies all the time. Any as any other alien movies just told you everything that was happening at any one time. I think that's why a lot of people don't like this movie. Because it was answering something that people weren't questioning. I don't think yeah. a lot of people were asking about the space jockey. But Ridley Scott was like, I want to talk about the thing that nobody's asking about. And people were like, but we don't care. Because we already have answers. Because they've already made all this lore. Because it's been 33 years. And we've had, in between the Alien franchise and the Alien vs. Predator, we've had six films. We don't need those answers. And I understand why people are upset about it. But like for me, I love these type of things. I love knowing more about things I probably didn't need to know. Yeah. Or no one I, love, asked I, love, I love the fact that we learn stuff, but we don't learn everything because realistically we won't. Unless you sat down and had a con- full blown conversation with these guys, and they explained their whole plan. You would not know what they are doing. You do not need to know everything in a movie, guys. Sorry. Exactly. A movie is shot as a situation in time. Do I meet you for two hours, hang out with you in two hours, for two hours, have an interaction with you? Will you know everything about my life, my motivations to why I'm here in a specific situation every way possible? I'd make sure to ask you all the questions to try to find out. Yeah, it would be a boring (laughs) movie if you did. But I'm just saying, like, that. that's what I understand. As humans, we like to know. We're curious. But I also enjoy films and stuff where they don't explain things. I like the mystery. Leave shit hanging. Like I said, when I brought that connection back to the original movie from this... Why you Will and Yutani went made the uh, Nostromo go to LV four twenty six? Yeah, they didn't tell us in that movie. Just the, that mother said, "Hey, you got to make a stop off here because there was a thing for possible life and check it out." And then that the that the crew was expendable and they had to bring it back. End of story. And that movie was riveting on how it handled it. I thought this movie did a great job. I don't think we need to know everything. I mean, I'm, you know, Sacco's probably gonna pooch it like everybody's saying. But... Unless it's the village, and then that ending sucks. Yeah, well, fair enough. But I get it. I understand people didn't like this movie. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But I, I um, you know. No, I get I mean, it... I, I totally get, like, I'm never going to judge people for disliking a movie I like. No, absolutely. I because respect I know, that. I, and I will out. listen to other people. I will listen to anyone's reasonings behind why they don't like a movie as long as it's not just like, oh, that movie just sucks. Well, why does it suck? Why do you think it sucks? Tell me. And then, you know, like, make me understand why you think it sucks. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I might just disagree with your with your points and you're going to probably disagree with the points I have for liking this movie. So it's just yeah. that's how it works, man. I just think people just get at people just love to just be like, this is this is trash. Everybody should believe this is trash or this is good. And everybody believes this is good. People don't like movies that are hailed as some of the greatest movies they've ever made. There are people out there who are just like, I don't like Alien. There are people who don't like those movies. That's true. Like in. And your your answer doesn't even have to be anything like crazy thought out. Like yeah. you could just go watch a movie. Like I just didn't care for the characters. Like you said, you didn't care with connect with the characters in Prometheus. Yeah, exactly. You could just say I didn't like the characters and I thought the movie yeah. was boring. But I respect there everybody's you comments. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. We Absolutely. always appreciate. It. And we do have one more. We have one on Instagram from uh, okay. my good uh, my friend Brad from Cinema Guys, who actually uh, he's done a couple videos already on this channel with me. So yeah, yeah, you're part of the family now. He said it looks great, mm-hmm. but the movie itself. <laughs> Thumbs down. And that is it. That are all the comments from Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much for everybody who left us a comment. I'm probably going to try to be more active on Facebook just if anyone wants to follow us over there and comment over there. Uh, but yeah, that's it for Prometheus. We have one more week left of the Alien franchise, which means which is going to be episode 99, meaning we have one episode until we are hitting triple digits Woo. on the podcast. Yes, we've done way more than 100 episodes in total between all of our shows. But for this podcast, for where it all started, baby, a couple weeks, we're going to be hitting episode 100. And we still have no fucking clue what we're doing. So stay tuned nope. for that. But it's going to be a blast. Whatever we decide to do, we're going to have a lot of fun. But yeah, next week, we're talking about Alien Covenant. So we are finishing off the Alien franchise until... Of course, down the road, they're probably going to make another alien movie at some point. Yeah, it's surely. been up in the air. I know there's an alien show being made, which I'd love to talk about at some point, but I don't want to go too far into it. But yes, Alien Covenant next week, and then the week after will be episode 100. Uh, we got a lot of things <laughs> planned in the future. Uh, still falling a little bit behind on the Patreon. I apologize to everybody out there. I just 
things have not been going exactly as planned, but I'm making sure that we're getting all of the episodes recorded. We're ahead of schedule on recordings, which is fun for me. But yeah, I don't want to go too much into that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for all the love and support, for all the downloads, for all the views on YouTube, for all that fun stuff, for all the shares and likes and all that on our Twitter posts, Instagram posts, all that. You can follow us at Dissect That Film on all those social medias. You can find, of course, if you're listening to us or watching us, you know where to find us on all your podcast services or on YouTube. Make sure to rate and review us if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, on Spotify, give us five stars. It really helps. The more ratings and reviews, bless you, uh, that we get for the show, the more people will start listening to the show, which is which is a lot of fun. We just, uh, we just hit 11,000 downloads on the show, which is fun. Uh, probably more by the time you guys listen to this. Like I said, we're recording a lot of these episodes ahead of time. Just breaking the illusion here, people. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's it why a lot really. of times it's hard to be like, what are we doing next week? What have we already talked about? The Stop that. <laughs> just kidding. No just kidding. Just kidding. Ever, um, out of the blue. But yeah, we've, we've had a lot of fun. I mean, we, we, uh, we've recorded with some really fun people already. Uh, we, I mean, hopefully you enjoyed our episode with Tony from Hack the Movies, where we talked about a movie that I never thought I would ever watch. Uh, and then last week was St. Patrick's Day, where we talked about Leprechaun, because we had to do it. We had to talk about Leprechaun for St. Patrick's Day, because I'm terrible about scheduling things for holidays. That's going to change next year, but nonetheless, Leprechaun, and then this, and then Covenant, and then 100. So thank you, everybody. Stay tuned for all the fun. We appreciate all the love. Uh, until next time, I am Brett Parker. That is my one. Those, those are my wonderful co-hosts, Tan and Angela of DNA Gaming. And this has been the Dissect That Film Podcast, episode 98. We'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.